move to invite Lisa Slade to officially open Annette's exhibition. Of course, Lisa's well known to us and loved by everybody in the art scene in South Australia. And she's the alchemist, of course, her latest triumph for the Adelaide Biennale of Australian Contemporary Art, a magic object. And uh, I'm really thrilled that she's uh, agreed to come along today to officiate. So thank you, Lisa. Thanks, Sam. Hey. Thanks, Sam. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Sam. Hi, everyone. I'm really thrilled to be invited back to open this show. I, I really love to engage with what Margot and Sam and the team are doing here. I feel like a bit of an imposter because I just met the artist for the first time. So, hi, again, <laughs> second time now. Uh, but in 1993, I started teaching high school in Western Sydney and it was Annette Bazaar's work that was really instrumental in my classroom because I was working with a kind of very multicultural group of young women and men. It was, a, um, it was Penrith High School, if any of you know Western Sydney. And uh, I was teaching art from year seven to year 12 and I was kind of looking for references. I was looking for relevance. I was looking for resonances in the classroom for particularly my young female students who were looking for role models in painting. It's quite difficult to find role models in painting from the 19th and 20th century who speak directly to, to young female artists because many of them, those who have made it through, <coughs> as many of you would know, are male. And uh, fortunately we seem to be at a point in the 21st century where young women have started to rethink, all women and all men, well not all, not there yet, but we will be soon, have started to kind of rethink the canon and difference the canon. But Annette Bezor's work really helped me do that in the classroom and it was quite instrumental for a number of young women. Many of them have gone on to, to make a life culturally, whether that be through art or through other means. So we would look at your work in reproduction and we would talk about the work and we would talk about the surface and the kind of tension, the thing that I've always been so interested in and in, in a way it's a kind of conflict in, in Annette's work, the conflict between standing back for the resolution of the painted face, but inherently I'm drawn forth to the surface. I was a late comer to Annette's work. It wasn't until five and a half years ago when I arrived here that I really had the chance to see a lot of Annette's work. Unlike many of you, so you're very fortunate. So I, I find that there's this inherent kind of tension going on and you see it particularly in the three works here because of that gorgeous, crumpled, layered, embedded, grounded, saturated surface. All of the tricks and accidents that happen across that surface create a kind of galaxy, if you like, a galaxy of, of colour and dynamism and form and the imagination. So I, I'm really drawn to that and then I have to step back to kind of appreciate, in the case of these works, uh, the kind of Byzantine chinoiserie, the cultural clash. I'm still trying to place the Chinese tea lady on the, this work through here. I know that woman in the background from a particular poster. So there's that sense of, I know it, I know it, I know it, I can't place it, but I know it, that happens in Annette's work. Um, many of you, of course, are familiar with what I've always called the Jade Lady, the kind of conundrum of the Green Lady, that the, the whole question around her identity and our exoticizing, orientalizing and othering of her identity. And she turns up time and time again. She's kind of always there, I imagine, Annette, for you. She's a, a kind of muse for you. It's so great to see so many of these works, to see this gallery looking really elegant. When I saw the show for the first time yesterday, I was so excited by the kind of colour, the openness, the generosity of the space. So the new works, which include both acrylic painting and G-clay printing, such as this work here and the work over here. When I say new, they're all new, of course. In fact, I don't know if there is an artist in this city who has had an exhibition every year for about the last 20, but Annette Bezor certainly has. I mean, it's exhausting. I felt completely exhausted just looking at the list of exhibitions. Annette has been incredibly kind of prolific and, and hardworking in, in her practice. The notion of the, the reproduction has met the idea of the original. But those, the tension between originality, authenticity and reproduction is actually the conceptual underpinning of the practice because it is, Annette's work has for decades troubled or been about this very idea of how we see ourselves as women and how we are represented through reproduction. 
So it's a very natural turn of events. People, you know, people have been talking about the death of painting. What, for how long? Well, you know, Delaroche claimed the death of painting in 1868, I think, with the, with the advent of the, of the uh, camera. And here we are, opening two exhibitions of painting. Painting is not dead. Precisely, <laughs> yeah. Long live. Absolutely, long yeah. live painting. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. Most definitely. I think it is a case of, you know, the king is dead, long live the king. I mean, I think that's the point. The painting actually did change form, but it still exists, just like the king. So that's a good way to end. Painting is dead, long live painting. Congratulations, <laughs> ladies.